Hello and welcome to Taylor Aerospace. Today I'm going to be doing something a bit different. Rather than going through my career mode playthrough, I'm going to do a quick tutorial on the MUN. How to get to the MUN for the first time, uh, manned mission, and how to get back from the MUN. So first things first, enter your vehicle assembly building. Now I'm going to be doing this assuming you don't have much equipment. Uh, if you're on science or career play playthrough, if you haven't unlocked much, I'll be using the most basic components possible. So we'll start off with Super Mark 1 command pod. Uh, you put a little parachute on the top and two drogue chutes on the side just to help slow it down. Make sure they're quite centred there. Then you want to put a uh, heat shield underneath and then the decoupler to make sure you can save yourself on the way home. Okay, next up you want to put as much science as you can on this craft. So I'm going to put a science junior unit that you can see I'll do here when I eventually find it. And I'll attach radially a mystery goo unit and all the science I can. There's a thermometer, the gravioli detector, the seismic detector, and where is it? The barometer. Now you might not have all of this equipment, but just put as much as you can on. Try and gain as much science as you can from this. Eventually you will unlock all of this, this equipment and you can go back. So next up we're putting the FLT400 fuel tank underneath with a terrier engine and the most we will use the most basic landing legs that we can find just again you can do it with obviously the better ones and the better ones are better but just in case you don't have them you haven't unlocked them yet we'll use this and i can show you that it does work what you also want to do is lower them slightly as you can see i'm doing here just to it keeps your engine a little bit safer it's just something i like to do there you go. so i will also show you now the thing i normally use if you've unlocked it i prefer to use this uh, slightly bigger tank there, I'm showing you the size difference. And you put the legs on that as such, with a terrier engine underneath as well. Uh, I like to do that because it's shorter, wider and more stable. But just in case you haven't unlocked those bigger parts yet, I'm going to show you doing it with the longer and thinner, the FLT400. Just so that you can see it can be done. Um, so I'll switch this out now. That's what it would look like, that's what I would normally use. But you can see now I'll switch this out. And this, this really is a very basic craft, but it, it will do the job. Um, you see how I'll load in what I've previously built. There's my mud ship. So, I'll walk you through this now. So you've got the lander on top, that's exactly the same. The only thing that's been added to that is some batteries. Please ensure you do add batteries to this craft. Um, so you put a decoupler there. Uh, underneath you're going to want the full-size FLT800 fuel tank with a Terrier engine underneath. Then it'll be a decoupler, and then you're going to stack two FLT800 engines on top of each other, and then you'll put a swivel engine underneath that. You want the swivel engine in the middle because it's got a gimbal and a vector range, so it allows you to actually have a lot more control. Uh, on the outside, radially, you're going to have two radial decouplers, again a, a clone of the stack in the middle, two FLT800 with Reliant engines on the outside. Um, that's the battery, I'm showing you the battery. You're also going to want to have struts. You can see I've added some struts there. They're quite important as well. Just two at the bottom, two at the top. Keeps it all together. Now, I'm also adding some fins here. And you can do that for the sake of stability. They are quite important. And you can see there the yellow fuel lines. Now, make sure they are attached to the outer tanks going to the middle tanks. The arrows on the fuel lines will also help show you that. And I'll, I'll explain why in a moment. But it basically just helps with fuel economy. And I'll explain now. So, we'll go to our launch. And you want to make sure you're at full thrust for this. So press, uh, make sure you've got SAS equipped, and then press Z to or Z if you're American to full throttle up, and just keep this going for a little bit. When you reach about 100 meters a second, you're going to want to start tilting towards the 90 degree marker. Uh, you use 90 degree because it helps using Kerbin's own gravity to assist you. It's called a gravity turn. Um, now you slowly want to start tipping this way over time. Uh, the aim being that when you reach about 10,000 meters above sea level, that you'll be hitting a 45 degree angle, roughly. Uh, again, this craft has a lot of extra fuel. It allows for some mistakes. Now you'll see here as well, my fuel tanks are draining there. The outer one's draining faster. Uh, I will decouple these now, and then you'll see that my interior tank, which looks like it's about a third, only got a third of fuel left, is in fact full that's what you do with the fuel lines that's why you want the fuel lines it helps you to do that and it just means you've got more fuel it's more 
economic. You can also do it with more. You can do like a stack of four or six, and that's called asparagus staging. But that's a little bit more advanced, and I'm not going to go into that today. So here you'll see I'm just holding the 45 degree position to gain some height on my apoapsis. Now, once your T minus to your apoapsis is roughly 50 seconds to a minute, that's when I start to like to tip over just a little bit more. You can see here I'll do that now. And yeah, just roughly that, T minus 50 seconds or a minute, and then start slowly tipping over. I actually tipped over a little bit too fast and kind of lost <laughs> a little bit of control. But we're in fairness, you know, this is a simple craft, simple mission, but we all make mistakes. Um, and it, it happens quite often. So yeah, just slowly start tipping over until you reach horizontal. You can see why there. It helps your uh, orbital line and your apoapsis just get really stretched out. It means that when you reach your apoapsis and go into an orbital maneuver, you use less fuel. Okay, so we'll discard the edge there. Now you want to create a maneuver node on your apoapsis and just pull prograde until you can see there that I'm making a circularized orbit. Um, and it didn't, this wasn't a great ascent profile, uh, I'll admit I didn't do very well, but this shows you that it can do it. So you fast forward here until you hit your um, burn marker and then just prograde. Go, f go full. There you go. I've sped up the footage here, by the way. This is why it's going so quick. Now, obviously, now that we're in orbit, we want to get to the moon. So set your moon as the target. And here you can see these new lines appear. These are your ascending and descending nodes. So I've highlighted the ascending node. And you want to go anti-normal here. This is your inclination. This will help change the inclination of your orbit. So... If it's on your on your ascending node, this is how I remember it. It's ascending node AN, anti-normal AN. So pointing down relative to the planet. Um, push that, and you can see there that the... There you go. And you want to get that as close to 0 0.0, or you know, just 0, 0.0 as you can, if you can achieve that. It just means that when you come in to your orbit to the moon, you'll be on a hopefully an equatorial orbit. Now what you want to do here is get the moon... Okay, and you can see that I'm uh, the Mun is at a roughly three o'clock. If you look at a clock from the top, Mun's at three o'clock. You want to go at six o'clock, roughly, and then just pull prograde until you reach this. You can then focus view on the Mun to make it more accurate. I like to use the pan, the graphical maneuver at the bottom, um, and just maneuver that around and try and get as close as you can by mostly just pulling on prograde will be fine i like to go for about 30,000 meters to 50 meters now you reach the burn marker and you just you see that i'm just adjusting it we'll fast forward If you don't have a maneuver node, if you haven't unlocked them yet on career mode and you just want to eyeball it, a good way to do it is to wait for the MUN to appear, if you're in this view, wait for the MUN to appear over the horizon, as you'll see in a moment, uh, point prograde and just go. Full throttle and you will reach the MUN. It's not particularly accurate, but it will get you a MUN encounter and then you can work it from there. As you can see now, I'm doing the same. That's what my markers are telling me to do. So there you go, you can see the orbit line expanding outwards now. And what I'll also do here is, what I like to do, is cut the maneuver node so I can see them coming in together by eye. Then I'll zoom in and just, rather than using Z and X, just use left shift to very slowly increase my speed and get a very accurate aim of where I'm going to be. So there you go, about 30,000 meters, that's perfect by me. So then you add the maneuver node here on the periapsis marker of the moon and just pull on retrograde until you get a circularized orbit what i'll do i'll fa I fast forward because i've done this a lot but if you just want to admire the view and whatnot get some science from high above the moon or close to the moon knock yourself out um, i've already done all that so i don't need to all right i post myself retrograde here uh wait for the bird marker to say go and just go you know it's um that simple to get an orbit the hard bit is landing that's the hard bit if your first ever journey to the moon that will be your most difficult bit 
Okay, so you can see that I've circularized it. Now, I'm going to try and land in that crater. I like craters. I find them quite interesting. I just find them fun to land in. They tend to be quite flat as well. So you can see that I'm creating a maneuver node and I'm just pulling on retrograde again just to pull my orbit right the way down. Okay, so I'm fast forwarding around to there and once again, just wait till the start burn in marker tells me to go. And I will go. It's not a very long burn, so you don't have to worry about it too much. And there we go. I'm very happy with that. You can see that I'm just pulling in a little bit more, so I'm right in the middle of that crater. Okay, so you want to point retrograde now. Uh, press G to lower your landing res to your gear action group. And there you go. We're ready to land. And this is the most exciting bit. I always enjoy this bit. So I fast forward time. You might want to be a bit careful here, if I'm honest, if you're doing this for the first time. Also, make sure, as you can see, I'm switching here. The altimeter at the top go from sea level to land level. That shows you you at your actual height above the land rather than your proposed height above sea level. It's much more accurate, otherwise you will crash. It will say you're 1,000 meters to go and you'll hit the surface. So I've sped this up here again. You might want to be a little bit more careful, but... All you need to do is, when you're ready, point retrograde, and again, full throttle your rocket, and just burn off all... What you want to try and do is burn off all of that horizontal speed. Um, so I'm getting quite close to the planet here, because I know what this rocket can do. I know that I can get this close. But the rocket, again, does have extra fuel if you want to try and be a little bit more careful with this. So you can see now that I'm just... Pulling myself in here, burning off all of that horizontal fuel, and eventually you'll see that the rocket starts to tip upwards as we're getting closer to the planet and burning off that horizontal velocity. And so there we go. Uh, I've got quite close there. I'm just going up because what you don't want to do is waste too much fuel high up, and then as you're falling down, you just gain all of that speed back again. Um, it's a waste of fuel. You don't want to do that. You want to try and be as accurate as possible. So I right, burn it all off and then I pull down and then I will use shift again just to control the descent. Just a very little amount of thrust. You can see I'll do that here. And when I reach about 20, there you go. So it's just controlling it. It's just making sure you're not falling too fast and that you control the speed. When you get below about 100 meters, you want to thrust up and just really bring that down. Try and get it to below 4 or 3 meters a second is what I do. It just makes it nice and safe. You'll see here, I hit the ground at roughly 2 meters a second, and it, it still looks like quite a hard landing. There you go. And you've landed on the MUN. Well done. It's, it is hard. I used to be very bad at this. <laughs> So if you have managed to do it, even if you can't get back, if you just managed to land, that is an achievement in and of itself. Be proud. So I'm just taking all of my science readings here. Again, I'm in sandbox mode, so I don't get anything shown, but you will. And you'll get a lot of science. If you've never left Kerbin before, you'll get a lot of science for doing this. Now you want to try an EVA. And first off, of course, what you're going to do is... I took my visor up so we can actually see Jeb's face. Oh, this is important. You want to actually take all of that science because this little pod, uh, only the command pod's going to be coming back with you. So you want to take all of the science from all of these pieces of equipment, otherwise you will lose it. So we'll place space, press spacebar and R to let go and activate his RCS and land. And now we're on the surface. And we'll do a little EVA report and we'll also take a little surface sample. So there you go, and that again will get you lots of science. If we brought the EVA kit, we could have played golf. And of course, the all important plant the flag. One small step for Kerbal Kind, one giant leap for your Kerbaling career. There we go. Didn't I'm sure one of the astronauts did play golf on the moon, didn't they? Call me out on that if I'm wrong, but I'm sure one of them did actually play golf on the moon. Oh, that, I'm not sure. I'm straight saying that would be awesome. 
So yeah, that's it. You can play around on the moon now, so you can jump quite high, you can just mess around. There is one more thing you can do, which is find a Munstone, and you can bring that back with you. Now, amongst the scatter terrain, they can be quite hard to spot. Um, I actually wander around quite a bit here trying to find one. Um, yeah, they can be quite difficult to spot if you've got the scatter terrain on. Um, which I think most people will, to be fair. And even then, even if you haven't got that on, I've tried it. They, they can be a reasonable distance from your lander. I believe they spawn in... It's like an RNG thing, so they sp but there's always one or a couple within like a kilometre of your craft. You can see here I've spotted one, um, so I'm just RCSing my way to it. And I'd like to point out, with some reasonable control as well, on my part of Jet. Oh, that wasn't one. <laughs> okay, I got that wrong. Yeah, it's this one. I think I spot one over here. But yeah, I will say, I was quite proud of my... I was quite proud of my control of Jeb here. Except for that. Bye, Jeb. I feel very sorry for you. I am genuinely quite sorry. Oh, and again. They can survive a surprising amount of punishment, our little Kerbals. They're little guys, but they've got big hearts. And extremely strong helmets. Come on, Jeb. Okay. Now, I've also, you can see, I've brought up my EVA propellant fuel meter on the side. Just so I know that I'm not going to run out of fuel. Um, for example, you know, if it's taken, you've got five... Five litres of monopropellant? I'm not sure. But yeah, if it's taking you 2.5 to get out to where you are... It's probably going to take you 2.5 to get back. So you want to be careful on that front. Um, you don't want to get stuck. You can walk back, but like on the mun, anywhere really. If it's any more than like uh, 50, 60 meters, it's going to be difficult. All right, this is the point where I've, you can see there that little black dot. I have actually just spotted a munstone. And again, I'd like to say quite skillfully. I'm fairly proud of myself here. I'm not the best EVA pilot. I'm not very good at it at all. Um, oh no, that wasn't one again. Oh, I really do spend some time trying to find one, don't I? But yeah, oh God, I would love to go to the moon. I'd just love to go to space. Like I'm 33 years old this year. I would be very happy if by the time I'm an old man... that I'm able to... There we go. I'll stop reminiscing now. Or well, reminiscing about the past? Future? No. Anyway, take your Munstone. You pull out a little hammer. And there's your Munstone. You see what I mean? They are quite hard to spot, but they are worth a lot of science if you can get hold of one. So do try to get hold of one. So yeah, then you can just find... Point yourself back at your... Lander, I've got the settings for the show. Can't remember what it's called. It's in the settings somewhere about being a show where nearby things are. If you haven't got that on, you can just go into map view and set it as a target, and then you can follow the target marker when you're in EVA. But yeah, so just come back, find my way back to my lander. I don't want to leave Jeb behind. Oh, let's be honest, Jeb looks extremely happy right now. Good on you, Jab. There we go. And that's it. We're done. On the moon. We're done. It's time to leave. So, fairly simple. Full throttle your way up. Retract the gears. Points a roughly 45 degree angle. You can go pretty quick on this. Uh, there's not much gravity on the moon. Uh, it's basically the same thing as leaving Kerbin. You just do it quicker. Um, yeah, you point flat. And once you get to about 20, 25,000, that's what I like to get to. You can see I'm just making it a bit wider there. Set a maneuver node, same as before. Prograde it out and get yourself a circularized orbit. Now, because of where I am on the moon, I am actually just going to keep going. 
until I get a cut. There you go, an orbit around Kerbin. If you're on another side of the moon, just get a circular orbit. Come onto that side of the moon, the opposite of where its orbital line is, if you like. And then where Kerbin would be on your right relative to the moon. Uh, and then just go from there. Prograde from there and you'll get yourself a nice little use the moon's gravity to help. And you'll get a nice little orbit around the uh, extended outwards around Kerbin. So you're back into Kerbin orbit, leaving the sphere of influence of the moon. So you can see I'm just extending this up, pulling the orbit right the way down. Now, this craft doesn't have the fuel to circularize back around Kerbin. This is a cheap, dirty, and lazy method of, <laughs> of getting home. A lot of people, what they would do is create something bigger and do what this. Pull a circularized orbit around Kerbin, and then you can decide where you want to land and be careful about it. We don't have the fuel to do that in this craft. Um, so what we're going to do is just point retrograde. Keep an eye on that marker, and you want to go. Just go on retrograde, full throttle, and pull your periapsis below the 70k line. So into the atmosphere of Kerbin. I like to go from anywhere between 25 meters, or 25 kilometers, sorry, and 30 kilometers. So 25,000 and 30,000. And that will just slow you down, as you'll see here. Um, we'll just warp around into the atmosphere. And as soon as you hit the atmosphere, your warp will be cut off. You Again, you might want to go a little bit slower on this if you're new. I am obviously just speeding this footage up a little bit, so we, it's not a hour-long video. So, again, you just want to point retrograde and disconnect so that your heat shield is facing retrograde. We'll see some fireworks there of our old parts. Make sure you activate your parachutes as well if they're on a different staging. Um command uh, normally i put mine with the decoupler but if you haven't just make sure that's there and you can see what i was talking about about slowing down here so as soon as you slam into the atmosphere like that your speed gets reduced enormously and it pulls your orbit in like that so rather than using fuel to do it and rockets we're just using Kerbin's atmosphere the heat shields the ablators in this game are hugely overpowered so they can take a lot of damage even if you come in at a lot of big speed so there we go my drogue shoots come out to help slow me down. Unfortunately, we landed on the night side, so we can't see that much. Um, that is part of the problem with this method. You can't control that much about where you're going to land. It's a bit unfortunate, but never mind. Again, it's sort of um, a cheap and dirty way of doing it. So there you go. My parachute's extending outwards. Helping slow me down. When the main chute goes off, about now. Slow down hugely. I will jettison the heat shield. And there we go. If you've managed to follow along with this video, you're home. You've done it. And I am very serious about this. Be proud of yourself. It took me a long, long time to land at the moon. You can see that I know this This makes it look easy. But for first timers and people who haven't had much time on the game, it really isn't that easy. So be proud of yourself. So yeah, you can see it, we're landing in the ocean, which is fine, we're going slow enough, we get a nice little view there. I imagine Jeb is extremely happy to be home. It was their first ever flight to the moon, he was terrified, they didn't know whether it was made of cheese or not. Spoiler alert, it wasn't. Now you'll gain a lot of science from this here when you come back, probably a lot of money if you're on career mode as well. We'll just save that as tutorial. And there you go, you've achieved your first ever moon landing. And um... If this video helped you, give it a like, give me a subscribe, that would be great. Uh, but if you just enjoyed it, that's fantastic. If you have any more questions, uh, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, same, at, at Maverick Taylor. And that's great, and thank you very much for watching. Stay safe.